Good morning, Plossers, and welcome to the TGIF Business Networking Hangout. I'm your host, Melanie MacDonald. I'm a social, oh, hi, Annie, social media outreach and brand identity consultant and host of TGIF since about mm, 2012, I think. Good morning, Annie. Thank you for joining us. You came right in just as we started. What perfect timing. Are you ready to introduce yourself? Sure, why not? Okay. I'm Annie Chalakian, owner of Silver Moon Bay, Patient Wear That Cares, and we make compassionate-based hospital patient gowns and accessories for people who are in convalescent situations and need a back opening gown. And your gowns are beautiful, and I think personally they're a brilliant idea. We've talked so much about them before, and when my mom was alive and she was in the hospital, I wish I had known you then. I would have bought a bunch of those for her because I tell you, those hospital gowns, they just uh, just aren't that great. And your gowns are beautiful. They're pretty and they're comfy, and there's no opening in the back, and uh, <laughs> can make somebody in that situation feel so much better. Thank so, you. I'm glad you came in today because this is actually one of the hangouts that I did for the Milani's Blooming Business Club members, a yeah. tour of Hootsuite and Bitly, and I think you missed that one, so now you'll be able to catch up on it because I'm doing it again today. I, I didn't miss Hootsuite, but I did miss Bitly, but I wanted to review Hootsuite. Great. Well, today will be a good opportunity to review, and for any viewers out there, this is your opportunity to see what the Hangouts that uh, Melani's Blooming Business Club members enjoy every month. Uh, this is an example of them. So let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about Bitly and Hootsuite. So first of all, what are Bitly and Hootsuite? They are some social media management tools. I use them myself to do my own uh, social media outreach for MelaniMcDonald.com and TGIF Business Networking Hangout and stuff that I do. And I find them very, very useful. Bitly is a URL shortener. You know, sometimes when you have a really long address in your URL bar, and you want to share something, and especially if you're sharing on a site like Twitter, which limits the number of characters that you have, you really want a shorter link to include in your post so that you can put more description and leave less letters in your URL address. The other thing I like about Bitly, because there are several shorteners out there, and in fact, Twitter has a built-in one called Owly. But what I like about Bitly is that it gives you the opportunity to customize your short link so that you can name it something that's easier for you to remember if you are posting it somewhere, and also that can add to your branding. And it's also easier for other people to remember as well. Uh, just that little bit of customization to me is, is really nice. You can also store your links so you can go back and look up what you've shared and it gives you some information and stats. Now Hootsuite is a tool that allows you to schedule your posts ahead of time. You can connect your social accounts to Hootsuite. You go to a dashboard and for example on mine I've got LinkedIn and Twitter and in the mornings, you know, I wake up early because I have dogs <laughs> and they wake me up early, but I'm not an early morning person. I'm a late morning person, so I like to laze around in bed for a while before I get up. Well, while I'm doing that, I'll grab the night pad, um, the, the iPad off the nightstand, and I will schedule my tweets for the day that are going to go out on Twitter. So I will put in, you know, six well, three to six tweets, depending on what I feel like and how, how awake I am. And I'll put them in through Hootsuite, and it will auto-schedule them. So it will auto-schedule them to go out at intervals. And it looks at your past history of things that you've put out and what gets clicked and what time it gets clicked. So it auto-schedules it for the best times for you. So you don't even have to like spend a lot of brain power figuring that out yourself. Hootsuite does it for you, <laughs> and so that's one of the reasons I like Hootsuite a lot. Less brain power needed on my part, more on its part. Let's get started 
And I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. Let me make sure I have the right one. And I'm going to start with Bitly today. Hi, Brian. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Okay, I think everybody can see this screen, yeah? Okay, let me go up here. Okay, so this is Bitly, and I'm signed in, and this is my dashboard, and I'm signed in here with my account, at one Meilani. This is my Twitter account. I have more than one Twitter account, so if I wanted to use the other one, I would sign in to, I, I would probably make a new one because I like to kind of keep my stuff separate. I know you don't always have to do that, but that's just me. So under your name here on the upper right, and this is true with most social sites, so it's something you get used to. Like if you go on Facebook, your icon is in the upper right. If you go on Google+, Plus, your icon is the upper right. So any of those of you out there who are kind of treading the waters of social media as a newbie. Remember, that upper right corner is a good spot to go to find your name, your profile, your icon, and get to your settings and your profile and things like that. So here's where you can set your settings and your profile, look at your privacy, your terms of service, and sign out. Okay. Now, on the left-hand side is the menu, BitLink stats your network, and this is just an introductory tour, so I'm not going to go in-depth on everything because we're doing both Bitly and Hootsuite today, and I want to make sure that I'm not uh, spending too much time on one. But what you can see here is the last post I made, and for reference, this is a post that I made on my business blog site. It's how can playing hooky be good for business, and it's kind of about battling burnout and how taking a day off every once in a while can really kind of refresh your mind, body, and spirit, and talks about how to play hooky responsibly so that you're not, you know, neglecting your business uh, while you're doing yeah. it. <laughs> and as you can see up here, where I've got highlighted in blue in the URL line, it's a very long title. It's a very long address here. So that would take up a lot of characters in my Twitter post. So I use Pitly, I copy that, I paste it up here, and what that did was it gave me this BitLink. How can playing hooky be good for business? And it allowed me, as I said, to create a customized short link. So I called it Business Hooky. And, you know, at first I tried playing hooky, and that one was already taken. So then I put business hooky. So if it's already taken, it will let you know. And now, when I go to share this link, instead of having this big long line that you see up here, all I have to have is this short line here, which is really great when you are... Whoops. <laughs> I accidentally clinked it, clicked it, and it went to that post. But that's really great when you are especially sharing on Twitter. Now what I like about this is it shows the clicks that you get on that bit link anytime that bit link is clicked. So I have two clicks on this bit link and it shows you who shared the bit link to the content. So what this means, this is not saying that I clicked it twice, Melanie McDonald two clicks. What, it's me, what this means is that my share of this link got clicked twice. So if anybody else shared it, it would also list them here in this box and it would show how many clicks their share got of it. So if you have a lot of avid followers and they're, they're actively sharing your things, you can get a view of who shared your link and how many people in their audiences clicked it. And that's what this is up here. It says clicks on this link and you see one's orange and one's blue. So if somebody else had shared it, theirs would come up in this blue color and that would show. Um, it shows all time, hour, 24 hours, 7 days, 14 days, 30 days. So I only shared this like a couple days ago and it got a click on Wednesday and a click on Thursday. 
So that's kind of a lot of good information. Now, you can look on your shares, your links that you've shared on the left-hand side here, and see at a glance which stuff is getting the most shares. So if I'm looking at this, I can look and see that burnout tips and blogging prompts got the most clicks, increased engagement got the most clicks, graphic design portfolios got a few, social media marketing and sales one-on-one -on -one prezzies got some, uh, free social media marketing and sales prezzies got the most. <laughs> People like that free stuff. <laughs> so you can kind of see at a glance here which topics and which headlines that you're using and sharing are getting the most interaction, which is kind of nice because now I'm looking and I'm seeing that it's, you know, it's mostly about increasing engagement, about social media stuff, and burnout tips. Um, so I know that those are topics that people like. This one, Perfect Close Summit, Increased Sales with Heart and Integrity. It's about making sales. So these are the topics that are getting the most links. Um, and I have TGIF Business Networking Hangouts in here too, and it's kind of nice because I can look at those and see which topics on TGIF have gotten the most interaction when I've shared those links. So this one is about using podcasts, and that one got more interaction than just a plain old year-end business mixer. Now one of the things that I like about one of the other things I like about this is that when you create a link and you create a bit link, it gives you these tools. So if I click on here, these are my tags. And I have a list of tags here that I can that I can assign to that bit link. So this one was on my business blog and I put business blog. So that is the tag that I applied. What that means is I can search for business blog now and it's going to show me oops let me take away all those it will now show me all the posts that I put out just on my business blog so another post that I put out is on the topic of Toastmasters so if I search for Toastmasters it will display now all the posts that I put out and tagged Toastmasters. So it makes it kind of easy to organize and find particular topics that you want to find. TGI F Business Networking Hangout. I can search for that one. So <clears throat> you can see that there's a lot of great organizational benefit to this, to looking at your URLs, your, your posts that you've made, and seeing what is popular more than the other stuff. And you can organize it by topic, or however you want to organize it, and you can easily find stuff that you're looking for. The other thing that you can do, let me go back to clear those filters. Let me go back to how can plain hooky be good for business. Another thing that you can do is on the edit button, if I wanted to change that bit link to a different name, I could customize it here. Where it says customize, that's where you put in this business hooky or the name of you want on your bit link. Uh, I don't want to change that, so I'm going to leave it. But it also allows me, do I want to show it in public profile, yes or no? So if people come and look at my bit.ly profile, they can see all the links that I want them to see, but I have some other ones that I keep private that I do not show my public profile, and maybe those are just my reference, some research I'm doing, or another account that I don't want them to see associated with my MeilaniMcDonald.com business blog, so I can put no if I want to, and then those will be private. Now you can take your old links and you can archive them and then if you archive them when you search here they don't show up unless you search for archived stuff. So you can archive stuff 
that's old that you're done that you're not currently monitoring and you can put it in there but just just remember that you archived it <laughs> so that when you search for stuff you're searching for your archives and you can find what you're looking for okay I'm going to go back to our regular broadcast screen now hi everybody Brian joined us Brian are you ready to introduce yourself Uh, still don't hear you. P press the other button too. <laughs> nope. Okay. Well, while Brian's working on being heard, uh, Annie, I'll ask you do you have any questions about the BitLink stuff so far? Um. Yeah. Let me just think about how I would say this. I. Um, all right, because I do post on Twitter, and I don't, and I have never tried using Bitly before. So let's say if I let's say I find you know, something I want to share on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and and then it already has a URL in it that links to that article, and I want to write something else on it for myself. You know what I mean? Like I want to put here, here's a great check this out or something like that. So then um, can I shorten somebody else's URL? Sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. Any, any URL you want that you want, want to... to oh, I'm going to mute you, Annie. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a little feedback. Um, any URL that you want to shorten, you can just copy the link to okay. that URL, take it to Bitly, paste it in there. You can still customize it and then copy your bit.ly link and then when you go to Twitter and share it then you have room to do your intro here's a great article I found about blah 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 okay. so it doesn't have to be just your own links it's any link that you want to so and then the nice thing about it is then you could add a tag and call it links I've shared or you know call it whatever the topic is about so it doesn't have to be just your links and you can organize it you can archive it you can tag it so you can keep track of it. I think Brian's on now. Are you on now, Brian? <laughs> yes, I had some settings I had to manage here. Okay. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Brian Rowley, blogging extraordinaire. I write several blogs and I help people set up their blogs and understand why blogging is so good for your business. So if you need any help with any of that, I can get that done for you. Brian Rowley, mousehelp at roselle.com. And Brian has a, a new haircut since last time he was on. I think it looks good. I like it, Brian. Oh, thanks. Nice. <laughs> and I want to say hi to Lon. Hi, Lon McClure. How are you? He says he's uh, not too late today. Playing from the start at double speed to catch up. Well, good. I will try to talk slow for a little bit and give you a chance to catch up. <laughs> not really. But hi, Lon. Thanks for joining us. If any of you out there have questions, you can post them to the comments in the event page and they will show up inside my hangout here because I'm using comment tracker I will see them and we will answer your questions and there's also a link to join in posted in the comments underneath the video feed in the event page so if you'd like to actually join us inside the hangout go ahead and click that link and come on in and you will need a Google account in order to do that because I'm using Google Hangouts on air to broadcast this. That is a Google application. So you will need a Google account to come in. Let's see. I'm going to mute Brian and I'm going to mute. I'm trying to mute you guys. Uh, and if it doesn't come on in a minute, would you please mute yourselves because I am getting some feedback from both of you. Alrighty then. Let's get back to the demonstration. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. So let me go back. To, let me go to that window. What I'll do now is um, we'll go into from Bitly into Hootsuite and take a little tour of the Hootsuite interface, like we did this Bitly interface. And then I'm going to actually share something on Hootsuite so you can see how it's done. So here's Hootsuite, and I am in my Hootsuite dashboard. 
uh, over here. Hootsuite's a little different. Your icon is on the left-hand side in with your menu with everything else. So in the menu, streams is what we're going to be talking about today. The, the layout here is that at the top, it lists the accounts that you have connected. So I've got uh, my Twitter profile here. You can see the little Twitter icon. I've got my Desert Sunrise Speakers Toastmasters Club Google Plus business page. One of the limitations of Hootsuite is that you can only share to Google Plus business pages. So you can't use it to make shares to your Google Plus personal profile. And that is just a real bummer to me because I sure would love it. <laughs> if I could actually use it for that um, and if I could kind of look at everything all at once. But I kind of understand why Google Plus doesn't do it because they want people to come into the site so it kind of makes sense uh, from their perspective but it does allow you to do your business pages and then I have LinkedIn so these are the three and I'm just using the free account you can see it's giving me the upgrade to Pro but with the free account you can connect three social profiles and those are the three social profiles I've chosen to use in this account. Another thing that um, I think is a limitation on this desktop version, well you know I take it back, not the desktop version but the uh, app that's on my iPad. Uh, for example I have the Twitter app on my iPad and I have a couple different Twitter accounts and when I go onto my iPad into my Twitter app, it allows me to easily switch accounts between my different accounts so that I can go do everything I need to for this account and then switch to my other account and do stuff I want to do for that account. On the Hootsuite iPad app, it doesn't allow me to do that and so what I have to do is sign out and then sign into my other account. And I, I just do it because I want to keep that one separate. I like keeping my, my own business stuff separate from the other stuff I do. Um, but if I sign out, then what it does is it, it deletes everything. It's like it, it deletes everything. And then when I sign in a new account, I have to like start all over with setting it all up. So I kind of hope that in the future, they will change that and allow us to switch accounts easily. For now, in order to go check my other account, I use the desktop version. I come here to Hootsuite.com and I can sign out from here and then sign into my other accounts uh, from here and see everything and I do it that way. But it would be convenient if I could do it on my iPad too. Okay, so, but I digress. Let's go back to the tour of this interface. Here is where you compose your messages. I will go into that a little more later because there's some really handy features in this compose message box. Uh, but let's get on with the rest of the tour. Here you have tabs. You can see I named this one Melani Twitter. This one is Melani LinkedIn. If I click on this tab, it shows my LinkedIn stuff. And as you can see, I'm not really all that active on LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is great, but I don't know. I just can't get enthused about it. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I'm not advocating to anybody else that because LinkedIn is a great tool, and I know people who do just tons of business through LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not one of them. Oops. This one is my Blooming Business Club Hangout stuff, and this is a research tab. So I set this one to bring to me from Twitter information on particular hashtags that I was looking at. So I set this up when I was doing a hangout for my Blooming Business Club that was on the topic of volunteering and how volunteering is helpful in the community in building your reputation in within the community, building your branding within your community. And so I was looking for examples of businesses and organizations that do volunteer efforts within their communities. One of the things I found was Team Depot, so I set up a, a stream to bring me information 
that had the tag Team Depot. So this was a research tool. This was not outreach, but rather incoming stuff. The other one I set up was Charity Water. It's another charity organization that I really enjoy a lot. So I was doing research. And when I first started using Twitter, uh, when I was working at a public agency, I was using it much more for research than for outreach. And it's a great research tool. You, you search for your hashtag. And Hootsuite will bring in all the posts on that hashtag that I set up so I can easily monitor those conversations and those posts and find stuff that I'm using. Now I set up another one called Conversations. These are conversations that are relevant to stuff that I do. So branding is one of the things I do and I'm interested in. So I have a, uh, a stream here set up to monitor the hashtag branding and this way I can watch conversations that might be good ones for me to retweet, that I might want to get involved in the conversation, that I want to see what other people are doing. Again, it's a research tool but it's also a conversation tool. This is one of the conversations that I might want to participate in and so I can easily narrow down my time by focusing just on this conversation with the way I have it set up in Hootsuite. Another one is Toastmasters because I'm very active in my Toastmaster club and I can easily see what's happening in the land of Toastmasters and District 12 which is our particular Toastmasters district. So District 12 doesn't bring in always a lot of uh, Toastmaster stuff because there's a lot of things called District 12 but I wanted to do it Coachella Valley because that's where I live in the Coachella Valley. It's a local social media, sustainable lifestyle that's an interest, water, etc. So you can put in as many of these streams as you want in your tab. So these are tabs at the top and these columns here inside your tabs are streams. Okay. Uh, City of Indio is a client. I do a lot of work for the environmental programs department there and right now the plastic bag ban in California is a, a big push within the public agencies and so this one is set up to watch things related to plastic bag ban and plastic bags. Okay, So again these are your tabs and these columns are streams. Okay. So if I want to add a tab, I click on this plus sign up here and I add a tab and I name it. Okay. So now that I have a new tab, it's going to ask me what do you want to show in this tab? What streams would you like? And it lists my networks right here very conveniently. So let's say I wanted to show Twitter stuff. I'm setting up my Twitter tab. Okay, well I'm going to want my home stream. I just simply click on my home stream and Twitter is listed here so I could actually change that if I want to the other social that I have connected. Uh, but I'm just going to do this for, for your benefit here. Mentions, followers, Followers is great because if they're following you, you want to kind of see what they're doing and decide if you want to follow them back, enter into conversation with them. People love to be interacted with. Inbox lists, outbox favorites, my tweets scheduled. So you can see that there's all these great things that you can put. Now I'm going to put my tweets and scheduled because those are kind of key. Now, what I love about Scheduled, again, Scheduled allows you to go in, plan your tweets for the day, make all those tweets and schedule them, then you can go off and you don't have to be attached to Twitter at the hip all day long or your other social sites because you can do Twitter, you can do LinkedIn, I can do that Toastmasters page uh, all at the same time and, and schedule into my calendar an hour 
a couple days a week to do my scheduled tweets or an hour each morning to do my tweets for the day. And of course, I'm going to check back throughout the day because if people are responding to them, you want to answer them. But this way, I don't have to, you know, if my tweets are going out at 9 a.m., at noon, at 3 a.m., and at 6 p.m., which is usually what time they get scheduled through, through the auto scheduler, I don't have to go back at 9, at noon, at 3, and at 6. So if I have client appointments at those times, I don't have to be like, oh, no, I'm missing my, my best Twitter time. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. You can schedule them all. Your tweets will be sent out automatically by Hootsuite at that time. So, let's go back to Bitly here, and I'm going to copy this business hooky, which has four clicks now, yay. Copy link. Well, it's just copy, not copy link address, because if I do copy link address, it will do the whole long URL, not just that link. And compose message. How playing hooky can be good for business. And I'm going to hashtag hooky and I'm going to hashtag business. Then I'm going to paste my link in HTTP didn't come out, so I'll add that. HTTP bit.ly business hooky, there's my link. And this is really about battling burnout. So I'm going to add another hashtag, battling burnout and burnout. Okay. You can see in this window here, it's showing me I have 47 characters left. So it's a nice indication of how many characters I can use in my tweet. If I wanted to attach or image an image or a file, I could do so here with this little paperclip icon. And if I was going to send it now, I would click this Send Now button, and it would go out now. What I'm going to do, though, is schedule it. So here's a little calendar icon that's scheduling. Turn Auto Schedule on. And it says Auto Schedule Your Message for Optimal Impact. That sounds good to me. Now, I can also save it as a template or as something that if I'm going to be using this tweet a lot, I can save it and then easily access it later on. So right now I'm just going to auto schedule. Okay, and then it will show up in my scheduled stream. And it shows that it's going to go out at 12.10 p.m. today. How playing hooky can be good for business. Here's the bit link and here's the battling burnout. Now when it actually goes out on Twitter, um, it will pull in an image and a little blurb from the um, from the web page that it's going to from the blog. It does you don't see it really here, but in Twitter that shows up. In fact, let's go to Twitter. One Melani, and let's look for an example of that. Okay. Let's see. There, there it is. Here's the one I shared on August 19th. How playing hooky can be good for business. Um, this one's got a long thing. I don't think I shared that one using Bitly. Okay, here we go. Social media strategy plan part two. You know, I I have to say here, full disclosure. I'm not really sure what's going on when I go to my desktop versus on my iPad. Because when I go to my iPad, all these ones that I share with Bitly, they look like this one. <laughs> so on the desktop, I think um, I think it doesn't always come through on Bitly. And so this tells me that it would be a good idea to attach an image to those as well. Although, when I look at them on the iPad, the image is always there. It comes out with this preview and uh, it has a little blurb that's an excerpt from the page underneath it that you set up in your WordPress website, what your excerpt is. 
And I think more people are accessing it from their phones and their mobiles today than, than anywhere else, or if they're not, if not more, very many are, and more and more are starting to do that. So I kind of, personally, I kind of tend to go by what I see on my iPad more than what I see on my desktop, because I know that's where I browse it from. Uh, so attaching a, another picture, you know, it just adds a lot of time. Do I worry about it too much? Eh, not really. I still get the interaction on it the same. So, uh, and, and that's because I think most people are accessing it from their iPads and their uh, tablets and their mobile phones. Okay, let's go back to Hootsuite's window. All right, so there's your dashboard. Here's your Add Social Network button. Here's your Add Stream button. Here's your add a tab button. It's organized into tabs and streams. When you add your streams, it can be the stuff that is about your particular social network. That's why I make a tab for Twitter and a tab for LinkedIn, my different social networks, and a tab for my Toastmasters. Um, and then in those tabs, I will put in the home, which is just basically your stream that you see coming up in Twitter. It's all the people you follow and whose posts you're seeing. Mentions, new followers, my tweets, scheduled, etc. Oh, that's my test one. Here's my, my actual one. Um, uh, same for LinkedIn. I find that way to be a, a good organizational method for myself, but you know, you can do it any way you want. Um, a, again, you can make it follow conversations, follow various hashtags. Uh, you can do it for client research, you know, things that are related to client work you're doing. And if you go and upgrade to Pro and you're managing different accounts through one Hootsuite dashboard, then of course you can set up your different streams for those different accounts. But I like to keep my own separate. That's that's just me. Okay, let me go back to the Hangout window and stop sharing my screen. All righty. I see some smiling down there. Annie, do you have any questions? No, that was very good. Okay. Do you use, you said you use Hootsuite, right, already? No, I said I saw your presentation and I, oh. and I haven't had a chance to get to it, but I plan on getting to it next week. So I figured I would watch your presentation again, which was helpful because I don't always retain everything. Right. And, um, and then I plan on using it. I think it's a great idea. Well, and you know, these these TGIF business networking hangouts are archived of course so you can refer back to it and also the Blooming Business Club hangouts are all recorded and posted in the community so you can always go back and refer to any of those hangouts as well. Um, do you, you use Twitter now though, right? Yeah. And you just kind of go into Twitter when you're going to post at the time. Do you use any other tool for scheduling? No. No, I'm not doing a very good uh, and professional job of my social media outreach, networking, whatever. I, I have a blog, I have Twitter and Pinterest, and I have and um, th those are the main ones that that I'm wanting to, to pursue. And I have LinkedIn, which it's interesting listening to you talk about it because a lot of people use LinkedIn. I had somebody yesterday I met at a meeting and I was she said to me well why don't you do this on LinkedIn and do that on LinkedIn and I'm thinking I don't really just like what you said I don't really use LinkedIn I always associate it with somebody looking for a job but she thought oh no there's great stuff on there so I'm gonna give it another shot well you know there really is a lot of great stuff on LinkedIn and LinkedIn has changed quite a lot over the years it's no longer just for people looking for jobs and for HR people there's a lot of small business people a lot of solopreneurs and they're building uh, very thriving communities it's really great I, I, I just don't use it because I don't feel that affinity to I mean I love Twitter and I can like easily spend time on Twitter <laughs> and just enjoy myself <laughs> 
And when I do it on LinkedIn, I just don't find it as enjoyable. But that is totally, purely subjective. I see the value of LinkedIn. I think it's really great. But I like Google+, I like Twitter, I like Pinterest. And those are the avenues that I use the most and spend the time on. So um, it just doesn't hold my interest as much. And, you know, you could say that I'm a bad social media person for that if you wanted to. But um, hey, there's only so many hours in the day, even with your social tools. And so if you, if you really find, my, my personal philosophy is if you find a or a few social avenues that you really connect with, that you really feel drawn to that you enjoy spending your time on, then spend the ones on the ones you enjoy spending your time on and make them work for you instead of the ones that you don't enjoy so much and feel more like work because you know, you're doing it all yourself. If it's just going to be all feeling like work and a drag, then that contributes to that burnout topic that I've been talking about in my latest blog posts. Um, and fighting burnout is kind of big on my list right now because I experienced over the past few months a lot of burnout and I'm coming out of it now and, and that's one of the things that I started doing was I stopped focusing on some of those social media avenues I didn't enjoy so much. I got rid of my Facebook. I'm not really paying attention to LinkedIn and started focusing on the ones I enjoyed again and you know that is I have to say, helping me come out of that burnout stage. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important because when I was burnt out, I wasn't being productive at all. And I wasn't posting and I wasn't really doing anything. And now I'm starting to be more active again. So another thing that was really great about that was is, is one of the things that is so important, I think, about this Hangout TGIF um, is that even throughout those burnout times when I wasn't posting and doing anything else I was still doing the TGIF twice a month and so that kept me out there at least twice a month doing something that I would then post around and kept me a little bit active. You were going to say something Annie? Yeah, um, from my efforts at social, social media I wanted to ask you if isn't it better to do what what you suggested, just have a few of them because just from an aspect of the ones that tend to really work are the ones where it's a two-way communication. So just that's what's great about Google Plus. And so now with Twitter they have, you can, you know, you can, people send me messages on Twitter. Yeah. So if I'm going to answer the messages, that's going to take time. But that's how I would think I would build a relationship with them. And the same thing for Pinterest. Now you can message people on Pinterest, and um, so so I'm you know that's very time consuming. Going to all, look at all the boards of all the people that post that pin something <laughs> and this and that. But well, you know, I, you I, do. I think keywords that you said there were you know as you said the communication and also what works for you. Because what works for you might be different than what works for somebody else. And if something's working for you and something else isn't, then spend your time on the one that works for you. And this might be a little different, I think, for solopreneurs than for, you know, say a business or a company that has a team of people that can be dedicated, you know, a social media department or team. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, for, for a bigger company that can afford to hire a team of people or people who are dedicated, you know, 24-7 to doing just the social media stuff and don't have to do any of the other stuff that we do as solopreneurs in running the entire businesses, then that's different. They can afford to spend the time reaching out onto more avenues and every avenue. So that's why we see, you know, big business names everywhere. We see Target on everything, not just on Pinterest, but they're going to be on Pinterest, they're going to be on Facebook, they're going to be on, you know, everywhere. So, but they have the budget to hire people out who are dedicated to, that is their job title, there's the social media people. Whereas with the solopreneurs, you know, we're doing it all ourselves. We are doing our social media outreach, but we're also doing our client consultations. We're also doing our product development and marketing and, you know, 
and procuring the products too and sometimes we were even making the products if we haven't gotten to manufacturing stage yet so depending on you know what your schedule is and how much is is done in your day you know there's just not necessarily enough hours in the day to do everything and mm -hmm. so if you are trying to do you know ten different social media avenues and that's making you feel burnt out and only three of them are working well you know cut out some of those and and focus on the three that are working because you are doing it all yourself and make the ones that work work and eventually you know if you get to that point where if you feel like if you, if your goals and your objectives are to grow and become a company instead of a solopreneur and you get to that point then you can start hiring out and and adding more in Brian you had a comment up what was you're saying you're muted remember to unmute yourself okay can you hear me now yep yeah I was are you talking about the thing that I posted or are you talking about something else well first of all what did you post I posted a link just to see if I could take it down but you can't once you post something in group chat there's no place I've found that says remove my last post or something so oh in group chat in the hangout yeah. Okay. No big deal. But you, you reminded me of Facebook, and I went to look at what's on my Facebook, and there's a great image. My sister took a picture of the snake, and it's really a cool picture. Okay. <laughs> anyway, back to your question. Do I have any questions about what you're doing and what you're explaining with Hootsuite and all of that? First of all, I think that what would be really cool, and maybe you and I can work on this together, is to create just a brief, here's how you... Get started with Hootsuite. Here's how you set up those channels like you showed already. Because for someone to come back and play the whole video of this presentation on your TGIF might be less effective than just a focus. It should take about five or ten minutes based on what I've seen to get your Hootsuite installed and get a couple of channels created. And so five or ten minutes is easier than waiting through an hour of a presentation like this. So maybe you and I can talk about that in the what's your thing after this? I think I have one of those already on my business blog. Okay, cool. On my website. So um, just search Melani and Hootsuite. And I can't remember whether that was a public one or something I did for the Blooming Business Club. So if it's for Blooming Business Club, it's going to be private. Anybody who searches for it. But, uh, uh, and also remember, people can fast forward through these. I mean, it's a YouTube video, they have the thing. So yep. you can always fast forward. But that's a good project to take the video and put the timestamp links in. Here's this and here's that. And back when I first started out doing uh, these hangouts and I was more um, uh, paying a little more attention to all that after stuff and spending more time <laughs> doing that, I did do that. But it is time consuming and, uh, you know, uh, what can I say? Sometimes you get lazy and cut some things out, and that was one of the things I cut out was going back and watching it again afterwards and adding those because that was like a whole nother hour or so out of my day. Yeah, so, that's the sorry, next, folks, but, you know. That is the next thing I was going to address. As you said, I don't know if you paid attention to my head nodding while you were saying, you cut out all the stuff that you don't enjoy doing and do the stuff you like because I think that really is the best way to stay engaged. Yeah. Social media, because if you find that 80% of it is just the chore of it and 20% of it is like the part that you like and have, that brings you joy, then do the part that's fun and focus on that. Put 80% of your effort into what you enjoy doing because the people will, who do engage with you will feel that enthusiasm and respond in kind. So I, I really like that advice. And then the idea yeah. of time-consuming that comes up all the time when we talk about social media for anybody I've ever spoken to about social media oh it's too you know I don't have the time is the or it is time-consuming those are the two most prevalent expressions when people talk about social media in relationship to time and I yeah I'm going to do a presentation I think I have 10 minutes in one of my networking groups and I can show people how it takes about five to ten minutes if you're doing it right using a blog to get an awful lot of exposure done in a short amount of time. So if you're spending hours on this, you're probably not doing it right, or you really like doing it. I'm not sure. 
But either one of those might be the case. And if you really like doing it, more power to you. And if you're not doing it right, then learning how to do it right could be very valuable in terms of time saving for you. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, you know, let me ask you this, Brian, and anybody else out there who, who might want to address this. Do you find, sometimes I find like, I do some social stuff for other people as well, for, for clients. And for some reason, I don't get the same burnout feeling from that. And I think it's because it's a different mindset. This is client work. Okay, I'm getting paid to do this. <laughs> Whereas doing it for my own self, that's the part that I get burnt out on. And Brian, I know you do a lot of stuff for, for clients um, related to blogging and, and website stuff. Do you feel the same way? Does that happen to you? Whereas you, you, it, it's easier for you to start feeling less enthused about doing your own stuff? It absolutely is the case. I had just I wonder why that is. Well, because it doesn't pay. And pay, working on my own computer, I've built, I've got nine computers at least right now. <laughs> that are running and that work and two of them are running Windows 10 by the way just for experiment but the point being is that I don't get paid for doing any of that work and that's like it feels like wasted time I have to do it it has to be done so your own right. social media stuff you have to do it so do the part you enjoy like you said but when I'm working for a client and I especially when I'm showing them how it works I'm so engaged it, it, you can you can have as many of my hours as you want when you're paying me and I will be as enthusiastic as I truly am about seeing you get it yes. because that's that's where I live it's like being on stage at Toastmasters you can be in Toastmasters and the part that's best is when you're up there presenting for me right so it, it's the same thing with all the stuff I do I can build you a computer as long as I'm getting paid to do it it's fun and interesting and worthwhile but making, doing my own social media, making my own computers. However, the recording of videos to show somebody how to do something, that I enjoy, and I'm just surprised that I don't do more of it, which is why I'm going to do these two. The one on Hootsuite, <laughs> because yes. I want to get my Hootsuite up and running again. And the other one I'm going to do is on the blogging and how to use that to really get at least five times the impact. You write a blog article, it should be, it should never be unseen. It should never be unshared. It should always be in at least three or four different places as soon as you publish that article and if it's not then you're just writing for the fun of it which I also do right anyway, that's my whole spiel I'm going to I'm going to do some things based on this presentation today awesome and, and you know it's interesting what you say about about the blogging too but one thing I want to address is that when we do our own socials it's not wasted time and it's not you know we don't get anything from it it's important because that's what puts us out there and that's what helps us build audience and that's what helps build reputation build brand identity and those are really important things but they're not just like as tangible as you know going in and looking at your bank account and seeing that deposit from the client payment right um, but they're still there because without that good brand identity and without that good reputation built that client may not be there because clients need to feel comfortable with you and they need to feel and potential clients need to feel that you are someone you know serious that is who knows what they're doing and that's what our own social media efforts do in cases like us who are consultants and service providers and in cases like Annie where she's actually got a product that she's selling you know her social outreach efforts help her sell her products so it is important but it is you know it is also something that is very common that it's it's harder to feel enthused about doing our own promos a lot of times uh, for for those of us who do it for ourselves and for customers, uh, than it is to do it for our clients. You know, like I never get tired of doing it for for Creek, uh, which is California Regional Environmental Education Community. I do uh, for my local Creek coordinator. I do her events calendar, her online events calendar, and her newsletter. And you know that newsletter goes out quarterly, and then when it comes to my own newsletter and email, I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do this, <laughs> and so I don't do it as often as I should. It's just you know, but it's a weird mental thing. I don't know. I like doing theirs because I know what I'm going to do, and I'm getting paid for it. And doing mine, I don't, I don't get the tangible 
paycheck result, but I do get the the reputation benefit and the branding benefit. So we have to remind ourselves about that. And the other thing I thought was really interesting you said was about being enthused about blogging. And in part of the burnout that I was feeling, if you went to my business blog today, you would see some posts. In fact, I'll share my screen. I'll show it to you. You would see that there has been a bit of a, uh, a dip in the dates of doing my, my posts. I have a couple here from August and uh, one from July and then you know it was February <laughs> since the last one because I just was feeling burnt out and I could not get enthused about doing my blog and so what I started doing was I stepped back from business and and you know it's been the topic of my last couple posts fighting burnout because it's something I've dealt with so recently and of course some of the what I've talked about in fighting that burnout was finding something you enjoy doing again because I was doing business all the time 24 7 and I stopped doing stuff that I enjoyed so I started doing something I enjoyed again which was photography in my virtual world, virtual world photography and then I started incorporating that into my business posts. I thought you know what if I can take pictures because you know when you write your posts your blog posts, you always want to include images in them for a couple reasons. One, because they need an image in it to be to be pinned to Pinterest. And a lot of people love Pinterest. Um, and if you don't have an image in your post, then when people go to pin it, they get a, a little pop-up window that says, there's nothing here to pin. <clears throat> so you want to always include an image. But two, it just makes it visually so much more fun and appealing. So I decided to start incorporating my virtual world photography into my business posts because I found that I could create the picture that I was looking for. If I'm writing a business blog post and it's on a certain topic and I have to find an image for it, I can spend a bunch of time searching for an image that I can use, that, I, that have the copyrights set that you can use it, and put it in my blog or I can spend that time going into my virtual world and taking the photo which is something that I really enjoy so in this um, how can playing hooky post I did that here's an example this is virtual world that I play in and these images all relate exactly to what I'm talking about in my post and it made it a lot more fun for me to start posting in my business blog again. So now, you know, I'm talking about going somewhere pretty and taking your laptop with you. If you can't, you know, let go of work and, and play hooky, take some with you, but go somewhere pretty. And I took this picture and I really had a lot of fun doing it, a lot more fun than I would have had going out and searching for a stock image that was appropriate that I could use, spend about the same time but instead of it being a chore, it became a way to incorporate something that I really have fun doing as a hobby, as, as something that's just an interest. And so it's incorporating fun into my business again, and that really helped me battle my burnout. So let me end my screen share and go back to live. And it is already 10 o'clock, and I thought this was going to go short today. Ooh. All right, Annie, let's go to you. Do you have anything coming up that you'd like to tell us about? Any promos, any specials, any final thoughts on today's Hangout? Yes, I'm gearing up to do uh, a men's uh, a sale 25% uh, off on selected items. And that's going to happen at the beginning of next week. And then in the middle of the next Next week, I'm going to do 25% off select women's items. But it's a private sale, so you don't see that if you go on my website. So for anybody who's listening right now, so the code to, the coupon code is just going to be the number 25 or 25, and then lowercase OFF. So it'll be 25 space OFF. And then if you, if, if you go to www.silvermoonbay.com and you uh, 
you would have the only way you you would have to um, look look through the items that you like and then see if if they're listed well listed at checkout or you could, I think a better way might be to, to send an email to contact us and ask the question which which ones are are 25 off because it's not public and I'm going to be sending out a mail chimp to tell people about it who are already our customers. So uh, is it for already customers only or anybody no. who signs up to your subscribe list on it's email? For, yeah, that's right. It's for anybody who su su signed up for my subscription list. That's another thing you could do is go on the website and just sign up for the subscription list which is down at the, the bottom of the page in small letters. Okay. That's probably the easiest. Silvermoonbay.com uh, sign up for the email subscription and you'll get that promo code. And if you want to, Annie, I don't know how much you want to advertise this uh, elsewhere besides your email list, but if you want to, feel free to put that in the comments under this uh, event page so that people can go back and refer to it. Oh, thank All right. you, Annie. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Thank you, Annie, and thanks for joining us today. And uh, go check out SilverMoonBay.com because her stuff is awesome. Brian, unmute yourself and let us know if you have anything coming up. Well, as I alluded to, I will be creating a couple of video how-to presentations to post on my YouTube channel. One of them, which is something that's coming up and you have six months to get ready for it, is the Walk to End Alzheimer's which happens in Palm Desert at the Civic Park, Civic Center, whatever they call that place in the middle of the city. And we walk a couple of miles, and it's fun. And a couple thousand people show up for that, so it's a really good place to meet people and network. But the Walk to End Alzheimer's is in benefit of the Alzheimer's organization. And the, the video that I'm going to produce is how to sign up on their website and create a team or, be, or join a team. And so, in any cool. case, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see these things. But I also want to, as I said, work with you to get my Hootsuite back up and running and demonstrate and maybe create a video on how to get that done in five or ten minutes instead of... I, I think if you look at how much you can do with Hootsuite, it might be a little daunting for the average person to say, holy cow, how am I going to get through all of that? But I think you showed it in about ten minutes, and I'm sure we can... Pres we or yeah. I can present that in a YouTube video to say this is how easy it is. You really ought to get this done because it's going to save you hours in the long term as far as being able to produce content that can be in five or six places at the same time. Right. Well, I'll remind you that today is a consultant is in session for members of my Blooming Business Club every first and third Friday after TGIF is over. From 10.30 to noon, I host a consultant is in session, so any club members who want to get me in a hangout and talk about anything they want to talk out about, such as producing a Hootsuite video or anything else they want to talk about from branding and strategy, they can send me an IM and we'll get in a hangout and uh, consultant is in. So Annie, you too, consultant is in today. First and third Fridays from 10.30 to noon, and that's for members of Melani's Blooming Business Club, which you can find information about at MelaniMcDonald.com. Thank you for joining us today. Our next TGIF Business Networking Hangout is going to be on Friday. Uh, let's see, that's September 4th. Friday, September 4th. And coming up as guests, hopefully soon, <laughs> will be some of the people that I've met in my virtual worlds because I really enjoy these virtual worlds and there are, I, in particular Second Life, I play in Second Life and Second Life is a virtual world with real currency. Millions of real world dollars get exchanged in Second Life. I mean literally millions of dollars get exchanged in commerce in this virtual world every month. and. I would like to get some business owners and um, gallery owners, art gallery owners, to come in as guests. I'm talking to some of those people in the world right now, and hopefully we'll get them in an upcoming episode pretty soon on TGIF. And it's a little bit tricky. It's kind of funny because nobody in Second Life 
really wants to show who they are in first life because it's a whole other world and you have this other persona in there and it's the same thing so when I come on and talk about it I'll talk about my character but I won't mention her name right <laughs> and uh, so what I'm telling these business owners in this virtual world is that if they want to they can create an account and we'll put a picture of their avatar of instead of putting them on camera if that's more comfortable for them but I think some of them are going to actually come on camera especially the ones that are musicians uh, because there's a lot of musicians who are musicians in real life and are doing shows in Second Life because you can broadcast your music you can play live and you stream it live and you have an actual club uh, like this building that people go in and they watch you on stage your avatar and it's playing guitar or doing whatever it's doing and singing and you know attend a real live music show and it's really fun because I've been to live music shows from people who are performing from around the world I've been to shows of people who are playing from Scotland from South America from Australia from uh, Taiwan, one of my favorite performers is in Taiwan and it's really neat because it's like a, a truly an international community in there so hopefully that will be coming up within the next couple of episodes of TGIF Business Networking Hangout. Alright, have a great day and a great weekend everybody and see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye.